We're recording, okay. Yeah, it's Keith. Um, I always get told off to tell my name. We're in a place called Huntington in the UK. Interesting application. Um, just show you here. Um, so, uh, it's not raining either. So, it's a, a generator. So we've got a generator running, generator power in the port and cabin, and a few other things. Um, but on this particular application, it's quite a nice, simple application. So they've got certain security measures they want to run at night. They don't want the generator running at all at night, or all at night time, and obviously over weekend. So the generator is charging the batteries and the inverter. And if we go into the porter cabin, it's lovely weather, it's beautiful. Um, and so what the company have done, um, they've actually got a cabinet here. They put a couple of batteries. Um, the, 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 and they've got our inverter here um, and basically the inverter is charging the, the batteries up. A couple of things to watch out for. Um, they've done it, everything's correct. Then you see here that they've actually got the generator powering into the grid. And in fact, if you look, if you bring the camera closer, you'll see um, quite correctly they put the CT coil here. Um, even, even though um, it's not going to ever export, but it's important to put the CT coil because the inverter could export back to the generator and that would cause a disaster. Um, this particular site had a problem, uh, and if I show you, it wasn't working when I got here, and if I go onto volt codes, you'll see here, um, voltage, and obviously you see lots of BMS not communicating, and DC supply, and you've also got this one here. The, this actually is an overload situation, they've obviously overloaded it. Um, if I actually go back on it again, because I, I actually misread, um, so AC voltage grid current high. So the grid, it's a grid current, overload on the grid current. So if I look on the output of the battery and we're looking at the discharge, so it's a very easy to thing to, to, to correct. So you have the, the charge current and the discharge current. So if I take up the discharge current, because um, we've got two batteries here, the small pile and tech, so um, the, I think they're 3,000 watts, uh, three, uh, three kilowatt hour hours each. Um, so it's 6 kilowatt, um, C rating 0.5, so a maximum discharge of um, 3 kilowatt. Um, so 3 kilowatt divided by 48, set this to 60 amp. So um, um, so we'll, we'll program this to 60 amp, which is the battery discharge. And it's pretty much the limitations of the inverter. So press OK, and if I go onto the inverter system mode, I look at here, and in fact the inverter power limiter is actually set. So I can increase the inverter power limiter the trickle ch trickle feed. I take that because we're running off a generator. Um, then I'm going to take that up a little bit. We're not going to be ever, we're not going to be exporting as such. So I'm just going to take that up to quite a high level. Uh, this will pre prevent absolutely anything going back onto the generator. So I've taken the grid. I've taken that feed level quite high uh, input because it's just a generator on the grid side. So I've taken the grid. That's a trickle feed because you're always going to have a feed because that's the whole point of using the generator. So there's always a feed in. We're never going to export ever, or there's no AC coupling. So there's no AC coupling, it's just purely feed. Um, and the, the output is on the load side, so that can be really as high as you like, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, and it, it's, it, they're not using, you can see from the board here, they haven't used the gen input, so they're just simply using the grid. We've got good communication. If I go onto the battery here, you'll see there's good, good comms. Um, in fact, the, the charge current on the, in fact, you see they've actually limited to 50 amp and 60 amp. On the BMS of the, I've gone slightly higher, um, which is fine because the, the battery BMS will override it anyway and it'll allow any tolerance. So, based on that settings, um, they should be fine. Um, at, first, I, I didn't, at first, I thought it was a different issue, but it's a very straightforward problem. Um, it's all working great and it's a great application. You know, um, we arrived here, I had to turn the generator on myself, it's really quite funny, but we can, we can switch the thing back off again. Um, the batteries are fully charged. Um, so we know it's all working, so maybe we should, we, we came here, we can turn the generator off. Um, the, the, the UPS, which is obviously powering the security devices, the router, everything else is all powered off the, the UPS. So we know it's all working. In fact, what we can do now, um, we can put it back into the state it was when we arrived. So let's just turn off this.
turn the generator back off because it was off when we arrived and we know we can double check everything is running one of the most important things that we noticed when i arrived on site um, was the normal light wasn't functioning on the inverter so very very important so there's no ac now um, we should always expect to see a normal light um, the, out, the, the power it's drawing is very little power you see here it's um, 20 watts it's absolutely it's, it's nothing the battery is 88% um, I let the customer they can switch the generator off them, on themselves when they're ready I'm not going to leave the site on any different um, but the normal light here is on so the normal light is on it took us a while because the normal light didn't come on at first um, it has obviously had a fault condition due to an overcurrent and the BMS wasn't communicating then we had to reset the batteries so everything worked, done everything, all basic basic stuff and the system's working perfect so that's it, nice application, something different so I just thought to show you and share it with you thanks for following